uh, arch top, P90s, uh, Bigsby. It has that old box, vintage, you know, jazz guitar sound and feel, but with uh, with modern appointments and, and 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 variety in the pickup selection. Players, I think, as they get more sophisticated, tend to want to at least own an arch top that complements their the solid body guitars that they own, and maybe some of the flat top acoustic guitars that they own. With Hamer, because they, they make a quality instrument that can be used for jazz and can work like that, but they you can always get back to a rock and blues edge with, with their guitars, and that's, that's exactly what I need. Guitarists, I think, in general, have always uh, sought instruments that are easy to play. It's important that the guitar feel like is the extension of, of, my, of me as a musician. Sometimes I'll just be picking up a guitar, you know, uh, and that instrument and the sound of that instrument will inspire me to write a song or to, you know, go a certain, a certain way. For me, playing a really good guitar like, like a Hamer, just the sound or the feel inspires you to play in a way that you otherwise wouldn't have done. It allows me to connect to myself on a level, connect to the music, and connect to, you know, it just rings or, you know, has that thing. They're functional on a certain level, they sound good, they suit a, a song that I play in a certain way live, kind of like my tool. If I was a plumber, I would want the most killer wrench there is. If the tool works for you, that's what you want to do. Really, I think about the guitar as connecting to whatever it is inside of myself that motivates me to improvise and to play. But then, when I'm at home and I'm not on the road, um, my guitars are like up on my fireplace mantle, you know what I mean? They're like these cool, beautiful art pieces that are always there. When I want to pick one up and play it, it's there for me. Just as objects of art, I love what these are. And they're wonderful guitars to play. There's something different about guitar players. I mean, all guitar players just have this real love for the instrument. The idea that somebody's so passionate about that instrument is, is testament to their, uh, you know, finding the right audience and the people who care so much about the specifics of the guitar. One of the things that Hamer has been able to do that's very impressive, I think, is to stay in touch with players. Artist relations today are incredibly important because that's how you convey, um, you know, what the guitar can do. As trends come along, players try new things in the field. I think Hamer will continue to respond to that with, uh, with new ideas. They seem to really pay attention to what people are doing with guitar and what they want and what they need out of an instrument. You can get these guys a guitar that had five necks or a fretless guitar like Andy Summers would use or something that created a wacky sound like Steve Stevens created with his, his uh, laser gun sound. And you have to be able to respond in a hurry and I think they're small enough and aware enough intuitive enough that they can do that. The thing about Hamer was they were the first ones who would who would bend it. You know, the, of like the first kind of custom instrument. Then is that I can talk with Joel and just talk to him as a guitar player and he understands, you know, exactly what I'm what I'm cluing into. And you didn't do that. You bought what was well, what they made. Fender didn't do that. You know, and, you know, very few you know and at that point people were getting more fine tuned into what Especially the working musicians were more fine-tuned into what they needed in order to do the job. You know, better tuners, better bridges, pickups that didn't squeal, better potentiometers, better construction, guitars that will stay in tune, you know, and guitars that sounded great. Well, you can look at one of these new Hamer guitars from one end to the other, and you can find something remarkable at every step of the way. You can find something remarkable in the peg head overlay, or in the string nut, or the way the, the binding sits on the neck, uh, the inlays, the pickups. I mean, just, just the way screws are countersunk and all these little things, stuff you don't see, interior bracing and so on. These guitars are extremely well thought out from beginning to end. When I first went to the factory in Arlington Heights, um, I was very impressed by the old craftsmanship type of approach to uh, guitar building. This factory had a door where the trucks basically backed up and disgorged beautiful raw wood. And 
counterclockwise moving around the perimeter of the building, you had all these stations where the wood would be shaped and cut and sorted and starting to be assembled and graded and move into the manufacturing process all around the room, cut, glued, painted, and finally set up and assembled almost right back where you started, where the wood had first arrived. And there's nothing better than someone who actually orders a custom-made guitar, and then they come and they see it, and it exceeds their expectations. What we've done in the last few years is to really, really distill things to the point where the guitars that we are building are a true representation of both where we've come from and also where we're going. Cutting a billet of ultimate grade maple using a bandsaw, he's going to open it up just like a book, and that's how we make the tops for the guitars. We use a broadleaf maple because it has a warmer tone. And every single step that we, we do, every single process, we're looking for the ultimate in precision, something that we can show off. It's a, a number of small things that add up to make the sum of what, what we're doing here. Right here, we're heating the binding with the heat gun to form it around the shape of the guitar. We've milled a precision edge on the side of the binding so that it'll fit down in the slot precisely and give us a clean enough edge that we can show it rather than cover it up with the paint. In mass production, you'd run the paint over the seam to hide it. Because we have such a precision edge, we can run our paint right to the seam and show it off. It's that close. Then he'll go back and glue it down and tape it in place and allow it to dry for a day. Every single step has to be done exactly right. Our top of the line guitars are all carved by hand. What Mike's doing here is, is roughing out the hand carve. He'll go back with scraper, and file and then just make sure the contours are exactly what he wants. And then the final contours are done with this French curve scraper. The French curve allows him to get into contours that you can't do with a machine. Our top of the line models, like this 30th anniversary, are all carved by hand. This is the artistry that sets this guitar apart from mass-produced instruments. Carving by hand gives us a contour that you can't do with a machine gives the guitar a character that's really individual. This is where we blend all the hard shapes into smooth lines. Several hours of hand sanding they go into each and every guitar. And this is really where you can make or break a finish. Every single contour has to be perfect all the way around the instrument. We're looking for a continuity of line. Anyone can sand a piece of wood. But to get the kind of contours and the kind of scratch-free surface that we're looking to create, it really is something special. You have to have a special eye for it. We'll probably sand this instrument for over 40 minutes just on the body alone. It's an oral tradition, actually, the way it's handed down, the way that all the contours blend together. It takes about a year and a half for someone to actually be trained to do this. In a mass-produced environment, you could never take this kind of time. You have to hustle along to the next operation. It's a lot more time-consuming to do things this way, but the end result is something that's truly spectacular. 